Hello and welcome to this special edition of SwineCast, featuring presentations from Swine Forecast 2009, a virtual conference featuring speakers from North America and the United Kingdom on topics relevant to this extraordinary time in the swine industry. The conference took place on Thursday, November 20th, and was attended by producer groups in more than 30 locations across the U.S. and Canada. Conference sponsors, in alphabetical order, were Lanco Animal Health, JBS United Incorporated, Pfizer, Swinecast.com, and Zinpro. At the end of the presentations, an extended question and answer period received questions from many of the producers gathered in small groups around the country. So, this is Swine Forecast 2009. Sit back and enjoy. Next up, President and CEO of Genesis Genetics, Jim Long, raised on a farm in southern Ontario, graduate of the University of Western Ontario. He's been in the swine industry since 1982 and today discussing his recent international production observations. We all are living in this industry for the last 18 months. It's been miserable for many of us. Uh, it's been unprecedented the amount of money that's been lost, the equity levels that have been lost. Um, we write on in our commentary every week about where the markets are going to go, and usually we're accused of being overly optimistic, in which could be very much true. But what we're hoping to show you today is the connection between what is happening internationally and how it relates to the markets in Canada and the United States. In our business, we we travel the world because of our genetics and we're exposed to different cultures in different countries and we've seen what's happening in the rest of the world as far as the markets. So I'm hoping that we can show you why how this relates to each one of us in North America. Okay, we, maybe the next one now, Ned, please. First country we want to talk about is Brazil. Corn last week in Brazil was 440 U.S. a bushel, which we know is all higher than what it is here. The hog price was 39 cents a pound, very similar to what we're experiencing in the United States. Cost production, 50 to 55 cents, about where we are too. What we see is the sow herd was about 2.4 million. Uh, it appears from our contacts in Brazil, liquidation has been 150 to 200,000 sows. They've had high feed prices like us. They've had lack of profitability. The key thing with Brazil, it's one of our major exporting competitors. They're a low-cost producer. They're able to go and compete with us, especially in Russia. Their downside is, is because of foot and mouth, they can't compete in some of the high-end markets like Japan. So it gives us a, a very competitive edge versus them. I guess when we're looking at these slides today, please keep in context where the mark, what the cost of production in these countries are, where the markets are, because I think that's part of how we relate back to the North American price and profitability for the future. Next, please. Next country, South Korea. This is a picture taken in South Korea about four months ago. Uh, our company does quite a bit of business in South Korea. Uh, next. Next. So the sow herd in South Korea about a year ago was 1 million, now it's below 900,000. Big factor for the South Koreans is they import all their feed. They don't grow any feed in the country, so they've been heavily hit by the high prices of uh, grain and oil seeds. There's only been three barns built in the past year. Where that photo was, where I was at, was one of them. On this slide says that prices have recovered to ten U.S. live weight. I wrote this last Wednesday. Since then, I've talked to our distributor in Korea, and right now, slaughter hogs in Korea are a dollar thirty U.S. a pound live weight. Their market has surged up. The reason is they don't have hogs. The liquidation has hit them hard enough, and that's what it's taken to move the meat into the consumers—a dollar thirty U.S. a pound live weight. Other factor here: cost of production is a dollar U.S. a pound. Certainly, a lot higher than what we see here. North America. Next. European Union, major, major competitor for us. Their sow herd used to be 15 million, is now below 14 million and still liquidating. 
cost of production is between 75 and 85 cents U.S. live weight. Last week's slaughter price was 1.45 euros a kilo or 80 cents U.S. live weight. When you take a million sows out of a production base, you're going to knock out a, up to 20 million market hogs going further, forward. Uh, one of our salesmen in Spain right now, he's met with people two days ago. The, it was a co-op of about 35,000 sows. The whole co-op had previously, or a lot of the members previously, had been at their government buildings protesting the uh, continued losses of profitability. The, I guess what I'm trying to say here is the misery has been everywhere. It's not just a Canada-U.S. phenomenon. The high cost of production relative to high prices has created liquidation everywhere and equity loss everywhere. Next, please. Next country I want to talk about is Russia. This was four to six weeks. It was about six weeks ago I was in Russia. This is a company called AgroComplex. Where this photo was is 2,500 sow unit. That picture was taken the day before we stocked it with breeding stock. Big agriculture enterprises in Russia, they're trying to figure out how to increase meat production. This company here has 220,000 acres of land, chicken broilers, very serious company. Next slide, please. This is a picture of another complex. Uh, this company has 170,000 acres of land. This is a 1,300 cell unit that I was on at the same time when I was in Russia. Uh, probably the most expensive facility I've ever seen. They spent $15 million on 1,300 cells, fair to finish. Next, please. So what we got in Russia, they're importing 30% of its pork consumption. Right now, Hot prices in Russia are a dollar fifty U.S. live weight. Cost of production is a dollar. We're seeing the trend here: higher hog prices, higher cost of productions than what we see in Canada, the United States. The Russian government is has a big push on to increase pork production. They're making low interest loans. They're trying to get their point that they're not depending on foreign imports. The price of oil has been a big factor. The drop. It was a big factor in stimulating this expansion and has been a big factor in slowing things down. We are aware of projects in Russia and that over the last four weeks as the price of oil dropped, they pulled the crews off the sites. The banks don't have money. There's loans approved and there's no money to fund the banks, from the banks to fund the projects. I, next, please. China. There's some photos we had in China. You can see it's a the Chinese are trying to mo working at modernizing the packing industry. Next, please. They're adjusting their food service or their retailing. It is, you know, we have a, a vision somewhat of China of hot meat where they kill the hogs and eat the meat fresh every day. There's an evolution going on in the consumerism where they're going to prepared meats like this, cryovac, whatever, uh, tray pack, as. As the industry in China moves more to this direction, it's going to create more opportunities for exports here because they need volume. Buy, you know, buying hogs in a supermarket one pig at a time from a backyard operation doesn't work. The more the food industry moves to supermarkets like this, the more there'll be consolidation and, in my mind, more opportunities for exports from North America. Next, please. Hog priest price last week in China was a dollar U.S. live weight. Cost of production is 85 cents American. Expansion is underway, according to authorities. They expect to slaughter a phenomenal number of 600 to 620 million hogs in China next year, which is give or take 12 million hogs a week. When we kill 2.3 million, we can think it's a lot. 12 million is a big, big number. I'm not sure about what's happening in China. I've been there. I don't personally believe they have any idea how many hogs they have. There's no central organization to do that. They're estimating things. My example would be when the blue ear crisis hit and their hog price had gone to almost $2 a pound. Uh, they were claiming out of 500 million hog inventory, 450 million hog inventory, huge amount of hogs, they'd only lost 140,000 hogs from the blue ear no way you double your market with that type of situation. What's happened is 
either they don't know or part of it is is an organized misinformation to buy pork cheaper from America because they don't want to reveal what their real needs are. Next. Mexico, our company does quite a bit of business in Mexico. Current price is 60 cents a pound, U.S. a pound. Uh, it had been up to 70. It's dropped back right now. Cost production is about 65 cents a pound. Mexico is part of our NAFTA, Canada, United States, and Mexico. It's part of what we believe is the continental marketplace. Pork moves relatively freely from the United States into Mexico. I mean, hogs in the United States today are 40 cents a pound U.S., there's 60 cents in Mexico. It makes our packers, gives our packers opportunities to move pro product into there. The financial crisis, the high feed prices has been a tremendous uh, problem for Mexican producers. There's no credit. There's at least 100,000, probably 150,000 sows gone out of the production. There's no agricultural loans. People basically have to live off their cash. Next, please. Canada. Uh, Canada's breeding herd has decreased 15% from its peak. The October 1st inventory showed 11% less pigs on feed. Over the last four years, Canadian industry has been hit hard by primarily by the high feed costs and exchange rate. We had uh, a year ago, right now, the Canadian dollar, U.S. dollar was a dollar seven, made us very uncompetitive in Canada. Probably an 85 cent dollar to the U.S. Is, is about where the industry is on an equilibrium. The last few weeks, the Canadian dollar has weakened. I believe yesterday it was around 82 cents, so we're below the equilibrium. It's been a big, it's a big advantage for Canadian producers right now. It's pushed up hog prices because the Canadian market is priced off a U.S. basis. We think the market where it's moved will stop liquidation in 2009, but Right as we speak, we know of several farms being liquidated still. Next, please. Okay, we look around the world. The only countries that expanded production that we know of and we can find and we can observe is China and Russia. The question is how successfully. We, we don't believe there's been a lot of expansion in either country. Every other country that we know of has had serious liquidation over the last 12 months. Next, please. When we look at the Canada, USA, Mexico breeding inventory, we believe on January 1 it'll be down 500,000 sows from its peak. That's give or take 10 million market hogs last year. Europe is down a million sows, which is up to 20 million less market hogs. Brazil is down. The trend line is, in our opinion, we got global. We have less hogs come into slaughter in 2009 compared to 2008 by a long, long shot. Next, please. When, you, when you've been in misery and you've lost money and you're trying to figure out how to pay the bills, you probably think it's ludicrous to say we got the hammer. But in a way, when we look, as we look at the rest of the world right now, Canada and the United States have the comp competitive edge with Number one, we've got capital availability. No matter what our credit crisis is here, we're in better shape than anywhere else, in my opinion. Cost of production, we go back to those trend lines. Other than Brazil, we beat every other country any other or any other major trading block significantly on cost of production. Packer efficiency. In my opinion, the packers of Canada and the United States are as good as or the best in the world. They have scale, they have volume, they have capital, they know what they're doing, and they're very competitive. And it's a big, big advantage. Maybe it's as big of an advantage as what we got. Animal health. Our major competitor is Brazil. They have foot and mouth. They can't export to some of the other markets. We can go anywhere, any place, any time with our product and are competitive. It's a big advantage. Got an educated workforce relative to the rest of the world. With an educated workforce, you get productivity and innovation. If you look at some of the statistics, it takes one American worker to run 330 sows for out of wean. You look at the statistics, it's one Canadian worker to every 300 sows for out of wean. You go to some of these other countries, it's 100. China's 30 sows per worker. Mexico is 45. 
We are more efficient, we're more innovative, and it's part of what our strength is. Going back, the last point magnified to the, with the ability to export to many countries, what I'm saying is the health, the packer efficiencies, the ability to put volume of containers on the water, big advantage for us. Next, please. Well, we heard a lot the last little while about the U.S. dollar appreciation, which is part of what's driven the Canadian dollar down. And yes, it has, and will it make our, us less competitive going forward? Yes, it's going to make product more expensive in other parts of the world. But if we look at the prices of hogs and the cost of productions in those countries moved to the U.S. dollar, we still have tremendous, we have a s tremendous gap between the two as far as where our prices are and everywhere else. The other thing is if you look at this graph, it's a historical graph of the U.S. dollar versus a bundle of other currencies. Yes, U.S. dollar is appreciated in the last few weeks, but relative to the, to go back to year 2000, the dollar is still relatively low. That's going to help our exports, no doubt. Next, please. What we're saying is the point that when we look around the world, even though it's been terrible here in Canada and the United States, we're still in relatively good shape compared to the rest of the world, which helps our competitive advantage. Next, please. From, what on, from here on, we're going to kill less hogs every week, year over year, through all night 2009. Reflection of that, in my mind, the marketplace tells us what's going on. Cash SEWs, our early weans, in the second week of July were $5. That's what people had to pay to buy all they wanted. It's a true supply and demand barometer. Last week, SEWs were $35. Why? Because that's what it takes to get them bought. It's a reflection of supply and demand. We expect by the first, of Jan first couple weeks of January, spot cash, early weaning pigs will be $50. $5 to $50. What's happening is the pig flow the, uh, through the liquidation is into the marketplace, and we expect the trend to continue where we see appreciation in prices. Next, please. Part of what we're dealing with out in the, is the relative amount of pork, but also how much chicken, turkey, beef is there. The last few weeks, the chicken industry, there's been companies in the chicken industry that have had, are having tremendous financial problems. They've lost, hemorrhaged tens of hundreds of millions of dollars, just like the swine industry. The first time in history the chicken industry has ever lost that type of money. They're in no better shape than we are. Up to, there's going to be up to 20 million less, and less chickens a week going in the, in the production of the meat availability for consumers in the United States and what there is available for export. The last time chicken declined was 1975, 33 years ago. What's happening right now, this massive drop in chicken, is something these companies don't have never experienced in their, the time of the management that's in place. U.S. cattle on feed is down 5%. I read a report the other day that said U.S. cattle on feed is the lowest it's been since 1959. If, if that is correct, that's 50 years. We're in a situation where chicken is plummeting in production, cattle is plummeting in production. It's, it's a phenomenal time we're in. Next, please. When I wrote this last Wednesday, I, I've been always accused of being too bullish, but I wasn't bullish enough. I felt that that we we're going to see 75 to 100 million pounds less total meat a week year over year in December relative to last year, which is a third of a pound less meat availability available for each person in the United States. Well, as I say, we weren't bullish enough because last week, not in December, it was 105 million pounds less total meat available compared to a year ago. I don't think the marketplace has realized it yet or reacted to it, but we, I would believe that that number is in an unprecedented situation where we've never seen before, where there's been such a tonnage decrease. Next, please. And the point is, it's not just the Canada, you, I mean, it's not just the United States that's plumbing in meat production. It's the rest of the world. 
You look at the price of hogs in Korea. You look at the price in Europe. You look at the price in Russia. The reason the price is there is because there's no meat. And and we're going to see the similar type phenomena here. We expect going forward the exports are going to hold. There's no indications right today the exports are slowing down. Russia, a little bit. Everybody else is holding. I've talked to some packers. There was a, a few weeks there things were slow. Things are picking up. Hog price today is higher than it was a year ago. We're all negative. We've lost money, and then we're losing money now. There's 30 to $40 a head loss. And you might think what I'm saying is has a degree of insanity because here we are hemorrhaging money, and I'm talking about this thing exploding going the other ways. Next, please. It's, it's similar to what we saw in corn, soy, corn and soybeans as an example. In July, we thought oil was going to, it was $145 a barrel. It was going to go to 200 We thought corn was $7, $8 a bushel. It was going to $10. That was the psychology in the marketplace. We all know what's happened now. Those high prices of grain are the reason why everywhere in the world is going to be less meat, and it's why the grain price is going to be down. Because what's happened is it stimulated grain production in Canada, in the U.S., everywhere in the world. We got more grain, and what we're doing is we're cut, as we're cutting this meat production, we're cutting the demand for grains. We're going, one's going up, the other one's going down. Next, please. Bottom line at the end, this is the last slide. There's less meat in the world. There's going to be less meat in the world. We had 90 cent lean hogs in the summer of 2008, which was the highest price in history. We're going to go that, through that. We're going to go beyond it. We're going to make money, and the feed price is going to be reasonable. 2009 is going to be good for hog producers. That's our belief. Thank you. Jim Long's comments on international production. Jim Long, president and CEO of Genesis Genetics on SwineCast. Your connection at your convenience. This special SwineCast episode featuring presentations from Swine Forecast 2009, a virtual conference sponsored by Zenpro, SwineCast, Pfizer, JBS United, and Elanco Animal Health. SwineCast is a production of Truffle Media Networks, which is solely responsible for its content and may not reflect the views, opinions, or positions of our sponsors. This Swinecast program is designed with you, our listener in mind. Thanks for hooking up today and let us know what you thought about this program and possible future topics you'd find of value. Send those comments to me at feedback at swinecast.com. Always good to be with you. I'm Ned Arthur, and we'll be talking soon.